What's up guys? Today I just wanted to take a minute to go over some tips I have for people who are new to programming or if you're about to get started as a computer science major in college. Now, I've been coding for about five and a half years, so I came up with a list of the five best tips I have for someone who's just getting started as a developer. Also, real quick, I'm doing a poll. Let me know if you guys are interested in me covering technical subjects. I have experience in a bunch of different languages and I'd love to be able to share it with all of you. All right, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the first thing I recommend is that you focus on your fundamentals. Now, when I was first getting started, I wanna learn new stuff every single day. And as a result, I didn't wanna take the time every day to go back and practice some of the stuff that I learned on previous days. Trust me though, looking back, I'm definitely glad I did. Building a strong foundation with some of those basic skills is one of the best favors you can do yourself when you're starting out as a programmer. Obviously, this isn't to say that you shouldn't learn new things, otherwise you'd never get anywhere. Instead, what I'd recommend is take the first 10, 15 minutes every time you go to program and practice some of your fundamentals. Practice the stuff that you've been doing in your previous sessions. And after that first 15 minutes, you can go and explore some new things. And that works out really nicely because then you got to review your fundamentals and help build your foundation, but you also got to explore some new parts of the language and further yourself as a developer. I know it doesn't necessarily sound like fun because it didn't back when I was getting started, but trust me, you'll thank me later. second thing I want to talk about, resist the urge to copy paste your code. Now I know it can be super tempting when you're first getting started to realize that you already have a piece of functionality that you want in another part of your program coded up somewhere else and just go pick it up, plop it in the new place and you're good to go. And admittedly you can get away with this to an extent. But let me just give you two examples, two simple examples that explain how this approach falls apart pretty quickly. All right, example number one. You've been told to print out the numbers from one to 10. Even as a starting programmer, this is super simple. You can just do a simple print statement and then you can copy paste this 10 times, change the number and voila, you're now printing the numbers from one to 10. So that's great, but let's change the parameters a little bit. Let's say that now, instead of printing the numbers from one to 10, you're supposed to print the numbers from one to 1000. Obviously you could copy paste this 1000 times, but I'm hoping that we can both agree that this is not the best approach to doing that. Of course, this is a perfect example of when you would use a loop. So instead of looping from zero to 10, you would just add two zeros and just like that, you're able to loop from zero to 1000. All right, so the second example carries a little bit more substance. For this one, let's say you're supposed to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between two points. And let's say you have to do this for 10 different sets of points. Now you could write the equation a plus b and you could put that in 10 different places in your code. But then you would realize that the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared, and then you take the square root. So you would have to manually go through and change all 10 of your equations, and especially if you miss one, this could be a really big deal because it would throw off all of your data and your calculations because you happen to miss one instance of this equation. Now, obviously the correct way to do this would be to use a function, you could have 10 function calls to one instance of this equation. So even if you did happen to make this mistake, you would just fix the one instance of the function and every place that called it would automatically be updated and your problem would be solved. So like I said at the beginning, I know it can be super tempting to copy paste, especially in the beginning, but just make it a habit and don't do it. So this point goes along with the first one, and it's that you should start a mini project as you're learning the skills to help practice them. The nice thing about this is it gives you a chance to make something that actually could be useful instead of just making lots of trivial, small code assignments for yourself. For me, one of my favorite things to do when I'm learning a new language is do a store simulation. This is great because it lets you explore a lot of different things. For example, you'll probably do a lot of input and output. If you wanna have persistence in your application, you might do some writing to files. You'll also get to use loops, classes, functions, and you can keep adding from there. Now, this is something I enjoy doing, but the most important thing is to make sure it's something that you actually want to do. If doing a store simulation sounds super boring to you, odds are you're never gonna to wanna to contribute to it, and that just makes it useless. Find something that you're interested in and figure out how to translate that into a coding problem, and then do it. What I really like about this is when you're done, you'll have something cool to show for all of your work. And depending on what you choose, you could actually make something that's genuinely useful for yourself on a daily basis. 
depending on your experience with coding so far, this might not mean too much to you yet, but the fourth thing I wanna talk about is the importance of keeping your code styled well. In a language like Python, for example, you have to style your code in a certain way or else it won't even compile, so you can't really get away with it too much there. But for example, in C++, it's perfectly legal to write all of your code on, say, the same line. This is because C++, like Java, uses semicolons as line endings. Python does not have line endings, and as a result, it uses white space. Fortunately, most people don't try to write all their programs on a single line, but it's not uncommon to see people who are just getting started not using their indentation correctly, not using their braces consistently, and other things like that. So when you're coding, make sure that you're using your indentation correctly, you're using useful names for your variables, and you're actually adding comments that add value. Now, if you're only writing code for yourself right now, this probably doesn't seem like a big deal, but trust me, once you try to get out into the industry and write code for other people, you're gonna expect certain coding standards. So it's just a good idea to get into the habit of doing things correctly now. All right, the last thing I'm gonna recommend is read a book. I think in the beginning, too many people are afraid of just picking up a programming book and getting started, but sometimes that's a really good approach to filling in a lot of the gaps that some of the online tutorials miss. As I've mentioned in other videos, I like to try to read my C++ book every single day. I find that this helps me keep on top of it and keep developing new skills even when I'm really busy. And even though I consider myself a pretty good C++ developer, the truth is that there's a lot of gaps in my knowledge that I might not even be aware of. And so far, the C++ book has really helped me in filling out some of those things and overall just making me a better programmer. Obviously, not all books are created equal, so make sure you find something that's at an appropriate skill level for you and is rated well. So take the time, research a book that fits your needs, and actually read it. And trust me, your programming skills will develop so much more because of it. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. If you're new here and you want to see more content like this, Go ahead and subscribe. I post videos every week and there's a lot more on the way. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.